So, therefore, when pratyaksha doesn't work, man goes for guesswork. For example, if I see a um, room from where noise is coming, uh, and I can't open the door of the room and see who is inside, then I start making guesswork. I may say that, oh, there is a big fight going on inside this house. Husband and wife are yelling at each other. You know, we may think like that. And somebody else may hear for some more time and say, hey, no, 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 they are practicing for some drama, for some rehearsal huh, is going on. And somebody else may, uh, you know, say something else. But then you actually open the door and see nobody is there, only TV is going on. Huh? Sometimes it can be like that, isn't it? Huh? So, Anumana Praman means guessing from outside what the truth could be. For example, Dalton said, uh, atom cannot be split. Hmm? Rutherford said, atom can be split. Um, as nucleus and electrons and everything. Huh? And then Bohr came and gave another model. Why? They are, all, they are all coming up with, you know, better and better and better imperfect relative truths. And not able to say with full confidence, this is the truth. Why they can't say like, say like that? Because they are doing Pratyaksha or Anumana. Pratyaksha is our senses are defective. So our Pratyaksha fails. Anumana fails because the guesswork uh, often may not be right. Just like what uh, Darwin said about uh, man coming from the apes. Uh, they were trying to give links for the same between ape and a man, but they f- saw all the links were failed, dismissed. You will see that. So, uh, this is the meaning of Anumana Prama. It may have been like this, or perhaps it was like that. <laughs> this is They can't say with full confidence, this is it. They can't say that. Huh? So, here is da- Darwin. You know, he writes like this. Huh? In, he says, he wrote to one of his friends in his letters. He says, I am a firm believer that without speculation, there is no good and original observation. So, it means he says that he himself speculated about how all these living species have come about. Huh? So, I, we will give you an example to become clear for you. So, this is a record of the rocks. Uh, he thought that the man came from the apes. But actually there are, right now, records available of humans existing millions and millions of years ago. According to Darwin, he was thinking that man has gradually evolved from apes. Then there was a Homo sapiens sapiens and the Cro-Magnon man. Huh? Gradual evolution. But now there are records available of man existing millions of years ago, much before the apes also and along with the side by side with the apes also. Here is another uh, humorous, uh, funny uh, thing that Darwin talks about. He says that once a bear, hmm, out of eagerness to eat some mosquitoes, he entered into some ocean and he started opening his mouth, ah, like that, catching the flies. And within a, I mean, as he kept on eating those flies, gradually he turned into a whale. He says like that, you see. In North America, the black bear was seen swimming for hours with wide open mouth, thus catching like a whale, insects in water. And then he says, it better adapted, competitors did not already exist. So, I, I, you know, he says that the race of bears by natural selection, more and more aquatic in the structure and habits, with the larger and larger mouths, it became a whale, he says. Huh? So, you have to hear Darwin's uh, propositions like uh, like children study this comics. Huh? That That's how he, he talks about it, how he how the bear turned into a whale. See, bear has a heart like you and me, but see, the whale structure is totally different. We have hands and legs, but the whales have, you know, uh, fins and gills for respiration. How can a bear turn into a whale? Even if you put a bear, even now, for hundreds of years, you put a bear in the water, it's not going to turn into a whale. In the same manner, another funny thing he says here, that all the, how did a giraffe get a long neck. He says that the giraffes are all first eating and gradually the leaves in the tree went up, up, up and all the giraffes could not capture the leaves. So, some giraffes had to stretch their neck, stretch and stretch and no? get longer. They would catch uh, extending their neck like this and that's how they got the long neck. And try to picture is what uh, Darwin is saying. Poor giraffes who could not stretch their neck, they all died. Imagine all giraffes lying here and there dead because they couldn't stretch their neck. So, one intelligent scientist asked Darwin a question. Sir, in case they couldn't catch the leaves in the tree, they can bow down their head and uh, eat the grass. And they can survive. Why should they die? 
because grass is available on the ground. And in case Darwin says, no, 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 they were having too much ego to bow down their head. You know, they will only stretch their head up only. Huh? If you said like that, but what about water? They drink water from ground only. <laughs> anyway, they're drinking water from ground, can't they pick up some grass from the ground? What a ridiculous kind of theory. And they're calling it a scientific theory, just see. Hmm? So, I'm just quoting a couple of examples. Uh, a bear turning into a whale and giraffe getting a long neck. Such a funny theory. See, he's saying here, I have given you exactly the wordings of Darwin here. Long-necked giraffes and short-necked giraffes existed together, but short-necked giraffes disappeared because they were very hungry and they couldn't reach the leaves from the trees, so they died. Long-necked giraffes survived, like that he says. <laughs> so, so, this is Anumana. So, Darwin tried to give a mechanism of evolution on his own, based on his mental outlook. See, evolution is not false. Evolution is true. But what is evolving? The soul is evolving from one body to another. Bodies are not transforming. Like, according to Darwin, you had a Suzuki bike, and he pumped the Suzuki bike and he turned it to Maruti. And then you pumped a Suzuki, and then it became Innova. And then you... For that draw, you know, very fast, suddenly it grew wings and started flying like a plane. <laughs> if anybody tells you, will you believe that story? And that's the story Darwin is having you to believe. <laughs> you see? But what the Vedas are saying, Vedas are saying, you know, you had a scooter, Suzuki. You left the Suzuki and occupied a Maruti. And after that, you left Maruti and occupied a Innova. Then you become a very rich man. You had your own chartered plane. You left the Suzuki, I mean, uh, Innova and you had your own plane. So, you are changing the vehicle, you see. Mm-hmm. So, that is Vedic evolution. So, ask yourself, which evolution makes sense to you. Uh-huh.